The Lakers finally did it. Okay, so they're one in five, but at least they're in good company with the Nets. It's time to run it back. Run it up, to run it back. Yeah. Run it up, to run it back. Run it, back. Run it up, to run it back. Yeah. Happy Halloween morning. It is a Monday morning, bright and early. And as always, I'm joined by Stadium Insider, Sham Sharania. What? Everyone's in black. Chandler Parsons is here. Eddie Gonzalez is here, who I am starting to respect your basketball game, sir. Now I have to watch you on the internet every Sunday. Uh, but yeah, what's the, what's the deal with the black? Was I supposed to wear black today? Is this Halloween? Festive. <laughs> in the spirit. So, so festive um i know i'm a little disappointed none of us are in costume but that's all right we'll, we'll do it next time uh but i do want to get things started off because i mean the lakers celebrated they celebrated like they won the finals they finally win one shams is this sustainable I think there is some level of sustainability because Russell Westbrook, the way he's played coming off the bench the last two games, I think is a positive factor. Like he played really well last night. Defensively, he had a couple blocks. He had some steals, some great passes. Like this is a level of play from Russell Westbrook we haven't seen with him in the starting lineup. So I don't know if it's the chip on his shoulder. I don't know. Clearly, I think there's a better approach and a better role for him coming off the bench. And they as a team shot uh, 42 <laughs> percent from three-point okay. range made 13 threes so anytime this lakers team is going to make double digit three-pointers obviously that is a positive sign as well but when the lakers last week decided to start austin reeves that was the beginning of of really the start of russell westbrook having a full-time role coming off the bench this is going to be his role for the remainder of this lakers season barring injury and most likely going to be his role if he ends up on another team either this season or moving forward oh all right chandler what do you think yeah, I, I think he hit it with Russ coming off the bench. I, I think they found something there. And I think last night he kind of embraced that role. He had the highest plus minus on the team. Uh, he was getting the crowd involved. And as easy as it is to hate on Russ, as a sports fan, you got you got to love that. You love when the Lakers are winning. You, I, I love seeing that for Russ, him happy and energized. Um, and let's face it, last night they hit shots. They haven't hit shots like that all year long. I think they had five guys that had multiple three. Um, you can tell early on in the game, LeBron especially was determined. He was getting to the paint. He was driving hard. Uh, they were only taking wide open threes. As the game went on, they ended up kind of settling a little bit, but they hit shots and that's going to help. And that kind of shows the potential that they have when they can do this. It just hasn't been the norm. And AD's back is obviously going to be a factor going forward because he was clearly grimacing late there. But look, I think this is a step in the right direction for a team that's struggling mightily. And I, I don't think anyone thought they're going to go 0 and 82. But uh, <laughs> the, this this was this was definitely a step in the right direction. And, I, and I'm happy for us. Yeah, you can see the team they're supposed to be. They won the rebounding battle. They didn't turn the ball over. They overcame a slow start from LeBron. And with Russ being what he was yesterday, and again, he wasn't MVP superstar Russ, but he was able to run the offense. He was able to set guys up. He was able to let LeBron be a more secondary option, even though he ended up leading the team and scoring 26 points. Um, this is the team they have to be if they want to win games. And then the most obvious, yeah, they hit the most threes they hit all season. 13 isn't even an astronomical amount of threes, but making 43% of them is huge. So they just did all the right things. Like Chandler said, they weren't going to go 0 for 82, um, but this is a step in the right direction. And shout out to Darvin Ham, got his first win as a, as a coach. That was, I think that was part of the celebration that was, um, that was cool to see. But they're still one in five. Um, there's still the the chance that at any given moment, the dysfunction just seeps right back in. Are we worried about that at all? And do we think Westbrook has fully accepted, like, you know what? This actually is not a bad thing to come off the bench. And this is a place in which I could prosper now. Chandler, do you think he's digested that and, and has processed it completely? Uh, no, not, not completely. I don't think he's the type to ever swallow that pill. Uh, <laughs> I think he had, I think he had a good game and I think he can try and build off this and look, I think he wants out of there just as much as they want him out of there. So the better he plays and the better they play, the higher his value is going up. And that's just going to work mutually for both of them. But it, it reminds me of the mellow situation. Russ, he's cut from the same cloth. I don't think he thinks he's a bench player in his head. I don't think he wants to be a bench player. I think he sees the success he had last night and I I think he's going to run with it, but 
I don't think he's, I don't think it's still what he wants. I still, still think he's hoping to start after he gets to, you know, traded or moved. But uh, like we all just said, I think this is a step in the right direction. And if they can hit shots like this, yeah, they're going to win some games. I mean, I, I'm just curious from a perspective of, from Chandler's mindset, like coming off the bench after being a starter and a guy that's, that's played the role, especially Russell's played Chandler played throughout his career as well. Like starting games versus coming off the bench. It's definitely a mental shift. Carmelo Anthony went through it. And then he, it took him really a year, two years to fully adjust to coming off the bench. I do think though, when, when I talk to teams around the league, they view Russell Westbrook as a guy that's going to have to be a spark plug bench player, a sixth man, Otherwise, there's not, there might not be a role for him. So I'm curious how this plays out over the next several weeks and months as far as if Russell Westbrook ends up not embracing this, this could, like Michelle said, have another uh, impact on the Lakers season. Yeah, and listen, as a player, as a player, you want to start, right? You 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 want to be the guy. You want to be one of the guys in the starting lineup. But I think it's it's more important to finish games. If guys can understand that, that's when games are you know are, are coming down to the wire. That's when I want to be on the court. And and Kevin McHale taught me that early. Um, it's not who starts, it's who finishes. And and I've always had that mindset where I'd rather be in the game when it's games on the line and have a chance to come, you know do something special than start the game and play 10, 12 minutes. Like you see some of these guys do. So I think it's definitely an adjustment. You got to get your body ready. You see guys now a lot in the tunnel, do riding the bike uh, mentally, you got to be prepared to check in versus at the jump ball. So there's different small adjustments, but to me, I'd rather be in at the end of the game when it matters. I always thought that's what made sense is that who cares about starting as long as you're in there when it counts, but it, I, I I'm assuming it's an ego thing. You want to be starting because that just implies Greatness, I suppose, but um, I, this is not a good segue by using the word greatness. And I'm sorry, Eddie, but we have to talk Nets next because they're one in five. They've lost four straight. There's so much going on at all times. Shams, I have to start with you. If you could put your finger on what the biggest issue with this team is right now, what would you say? Well, I think there are a few issues, several uh, for sure. I think the biggest is they're just not a good defensive team. They're the worst defensive team in the league. They have the worst by far the worst defensive rating across the entire NBA out of all 30 teams. They're, they're last in defensive rebounds per game. So anytime you're not defending and you're not rebounding, you're not going to put yourself in a position to win games, no matter how well your, your offense plays. Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, they brought it offensively throughout this season, but they are just missing it, uh, you know, totally defensively. So I don't know if that's, is that coaching? Is that personnel? Is that, you know, not following the proper game plans? And at the end of the day, Ben Simmons has yet to score double-digit points this season. That's a problem. And the energy, I think, is for sure missing throughout this roster right now from a defensive perspective. Chandler? Yeah, I mean, he hit it. They, they they have zero defensive presence. They don't play hard. You're seeing the Pacers the other night just doing all the little things, getting to the loose balls, um, taking charges, diving on the floor. They're playing with a purpose. The the Nets just kind of throw the ball out there. They hope their two stars are gonna are going to get forty, and that's gonna that's gonna get them wins. And it's confusing because they're starting a defensive team with Ben Simmons and Royce O'Neal. They're throwing Duke in there. Uh, I don't know if it's effort, if it's defensive schemes, what it is, but yeah, they're thin up front. They have no size uh, and they just can't get stops. And they're expecting Kyrie and KD just to carry them through. And I wish I could say, Oh, like Seth Curry's coming back. It's sure. It's going to help, but I don't think it's going to kind of be the answer. And let's talk about Kyrie obviously with like, you know, there's has to be some sort of Kyrie distraction too to, pile on all their other issues right now. So Eddie, maybe, you know, more than I do, but that type of stuff <laughs> definitely is not helping. Yeah. I mean, they have many issues. I think defense is key there. They're starting a, a lineup that they want to be a defensive team, but Ben hasn't been great at the point of attack. Uh, they haven't protected the rim. Well, they don't rebound well, and it all just cascades into a million different things. Uh, on top of that, their offense is incredibly stagnant. And if you look at it, it's it's personnel. They they have to trot out two non-shooters at multiple times. Uh, even when they shift to, okay, we'll play Ben at center, they'll, they'll still trot out guys who aren't necessarily shooters as well because they have to keep up somehow defensively. They gave up 23 threes to the Pacers the other night, and they shot 50% on them. Uh, you know, And that was with a heave and with Buddy Hill throwing one up at the end of the game just to beat the shot clock. Um there's many issues on the court, the stuff off the court. I mean, 
Chandler, maybe you know. I mean, we'll talk about it with Kyrie, but I I don't know how distracting it is to be asked these questions. I've never been there. I, do you get on the court and you just tune it all out? You're cool. Or this is a real thing that weighs on you as a team. I mean, listen, it's that's not the reason why you're missing shots or missing defensive assignments, right? You can easily point to that and use that as an excuse. Um, I just think for the locker room, for the morale, for the chemistry, it's just another distraction to on top of their on court issues that just is not helping in the long run. But no, that's not a reason, you know, that why Ben Simmons isn't scoring 10 points or more. Like it has nothing to do with it. You know what? I want to stick with the Kyrie thing. Cause yes, obviously we're, we're all aware of, of the latest drama that surrounds him. It, it always seems to be something. And I know there are different um, responses. I think the post had a, an article this morning, basically calling for him to be cut um, that it was time and, and we don't want to deal with it anymore. That kind of an attitude guys, what do you think the options actually are as far as Kyrie Irving is concerned, what can be done or what should be done? I don't know who wants to start this one, by the way, take it away. <laughs> Yeah, th there's not, I mean, to waive Kyrie Irving, that's not a route I, I expect this to go. <clears throat> now, th the whole prospect of him coming back to the team this year <clears throat> was for him to play well and hopefully the team playing well and eventually going far. This latest situation, of course, I, I think it, it has to give some level of you have to think about the future. What are the next steps? Um, but at the end of the day, this team is one in five. They need him to play well. And in order to win now, if the team is not doing well, do you look at the trade market? I mean, that's gotta be something that's, that's on their minds, but right now, you know, I don't, there's not really a clarity as far as next steps. The tweet was taken down last night, um, but there's clear issues <clears throat> on this team. And when you look at the Ben Simmons situation, I think that there was leeway for him in Philadelphia as number one overall pick. Um, and now in Brooklyn, there's just these heightened expectations. This is a big season for Brooklyn. They wanted to win a championship. And if things don't go over the next few games, next few weeks, it, you have to unpack not only, you know, Kyrie Irving's future, but this entire team's future. If, if you look at the way this franchise has built itself in the last half decade, they're, they're here to win titles. They're here to win games. They're here to be a marquee attraction in one of the biggest cities in the world. They loaded themselves up with three superstars. And even when they had to trade one away, they traded for a number one overall pick. Like Sam said, they traded for somebody who they thought was an all-star. They don't want to blow it up. They had ample opportunity to do that this summer. To They had escape routes everywhere with Kyrie, with Kevin. I'm imagining even with Ben, if they wanted to get off that at some point. They chose to push forward, stubbornly maybe so. And now we're seeing some of the issues that could arise. They could play through it. They can be better. But you're asking for a lot. This is an older team as well. They don't look athletic, which is a big part of why their defense isn't so great. They're trotting out a bunch of 30-plus guys. And even the guys that are younger, like Ben, he's not especially athletic as he's starting to recover himself. They're in a really tough bond. Like, you hate to say, yo, one in five, it's Halloween. The season just started. It's do or die, make or break. But they're in a tough situation with the way they built this team and the things they did this summer to try to hold on to what they have. We'll see how they rally the troops. It's got to be fascinating in the locker room. At some point, the players, I wish you could give them true serum because it can't be fun and it's got to be irritating and it's always something. And we can move on now because we've got some serious news in the NBA. The Warriors are under 500. They host Miami tomorrow, another team that's not living up to expectations. Are we worried about this Golden State team, Chandler? Uh, again, I am not. I think this is, you know, there's methods to Kerr's madness. And I think he's throwing these young guys in the fire early. He's getting them valuable experience. Um, I, we've said this before, but I think he's willing to take some losses now in October to get guys like Moody and Kaminga and Wiseman, these guys in game valuable reps, that's going to pay off for them later in the season in the playoffs. So, uh, do you want to lose to Charlotte and Detroit back to back? Never, but I don't, I don't think this is, you know, hit the panic button. Draymond and clay are different players. I don't, I don't think so. I think this is just them working their younger guys in. Yeah. They've won four titles in nine seasons. I'm, I'm not going to concern myself with this team till like May. It's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> May. May seems like a good time to worry about it. Uh, yeah. I, I want to, uh, there's a team that's been actually there are a few teams right now that I think are surprising people, which is fun, I think, as a fan. But Cavs, 
we, they finished the season last year and we thought, okay, this could be a fun team to watch. Let's keep our eye on it. And then they add Donovan Mitchell and now they're dominating. He's 30 points in what five of last six games. Do you, we think that this Cavs team has enough to really compete with some of the elites in the Eastern conference? Eddie, you want to start? Yeah. I mean, I think if you're going to get this Donovan Mitchell, yeah. And we've yet to see them with Darius Garland. He's, he only played in the first game and he got hurt. Um, but he's proven himself as a big playoff performer. The way the roster is set up, it's set up for playoff basketball. Chandler, you know, we all know in, in the playoffs, it comes down to, you know, can you guard this guy? We're going to do everything we can to get our guys in, in their spaces. And can you do that? And Donovan is one of the best ISO scorers in the league. And Garland is building himself into that. And with the athletic front line and all the shooting they surround those two guys with, they're, they're, they're a dark horse in the East for sure. And if they can remain healthy, while some of these older teams have to deal with all of that, you, you you never know what we could see. I saw 30 and 10 from Donovan Mitchell last night, and there were points in the last couple of years where the Jazz thought about making Donovan Mitchell their full-time point guard because they felt like he would play better on the ball, have more assists, play make. He had that ability. He could really be like a James Harden for them. So they toyed around with that, uh, that idea, and I think at times it was successful. But we've seen with Darius Garland out uh, basically all season – so far, they've played Donovan Mitchell primarily at the point, and he's played at a great level. The team is looking good. So there's no question. They have the they have the firepower. They have the depth to do it, to be competitive in the, in the Eastern Conference playoffs. But I want to see this team with, with Darius Garland. I want to see this team with his creativity. How does he coexist with Donovan Mitchell? Because that was definitely a big question going into this Cavs season. Yeah, this reminds me a lot of last year when, when Sexton went down and kind of Garland took that jump. And I think it's actually going to pay off for Donovan. A new team, new city, new system. Um, he's had these last couple of games without Garland to kind of get his feet wet, get comfortable. So I agree. Once Garland comes back, it'll be interesting to see those two guys coexist. Who runs point? Who looks to score on any given night? But honestly, shout out JB Bickerstaff, man. He's he's my favorite coach I ever had. Um, I talked to him last night, and he just said these guys are having fun. That they're sacrificing, they're playing unselfish, and you can you can walk when you watch them play. They're they're giving up the open shot for a, a, a more open shot. They're they're getting the crowd involved. It's it's packed. Like it it looks like it's fun in Cleveland right now. And they have a young deep team, guys like Dean Wade and Kevin Love. Like these guys are are, are factors, and it makes me so happy for JB because he's an awesome dude. He's one of those coaches that you want to play hard for, you want to win for. He's relatable. He's one of the guys, and he's brilliant X's and O's and defensively. So. I, I definitely like them. And, and man, Donovan Mitchell, he's better than advertised. He he's going. Yeah. You know, Kevin Love is a great point. And it's something I want to touch on as well. Looking at his old AAU buddy, his old UCLA buddy, Russ, this is kind of the role he could embrace. Kevin Love hit eight threes last night. He's a champion. He's played in <laughs> humongous games with this franchise. He's the longest tenured calf and he accepted a six man role off the bench. It's only helped that team, him ha him providing that spacing. He's in there late in games. He's finishing games with them in the right matchups. Um, they're a deep team. I think they played 12 guys yesterday, and that's without Garland. So there's a lot to love about this team uh, as they continue to get better throughout the season as well, build continuity. I am curious about the kind of distributing the ball handling duties between the two guys, but I think it'll help Donovan to be able to be a secondary ball handler at certain points in games and then to finish it with the ball in his hand. Um, yeah, it, it, they're going to float under the radar as well with all the things going on in the East, the teams that are at the top, the Bucks are undefeated. The Celtics just went to the finals. The Nets are with the Nets are, uh, they got a really good chance to get into the top three, have some home court and yeah, you get the right matchups. They can be in the conference finals this year for sure. And they do play at Boston on Wednesday. So that's, that's, that's a must see game. And who'd have thought we'd be saying that a couple of years ago about Cleveland. I kind of love it. Uh, the jazz, <laughs> it's another team that is outplaying all expectations sitting at five and two. They're at Memphis tonight. Um, I, you know, we started the season I, almost mockingly talking about who would tank and who wouldn't. And I, and I thought that this was a team that was in that category, but no one told them, no one told Lori Markinen, uh, can this continue? Should it continue? I mean, that's, I guess that's the question as well, but it's fun for jazz fans, but do we think Markinen's legit? Is this sustainable as well? Eddie? Yeah. I mean, this guy was a lottery pick. This was somebody who was pegged to be a franchise cornerstone and two different franchises. He's a talented near seven footer. He can shoot. He can do a bunch of different things on offense. People have always worried about his defense, 
But when he played in Cleveland and they unveiled that massive lineup, he held his own. He held his own out there as well. So he has opportunity to really thrive and be the centerpiece of this team as Colin Sexton kind of figures out his role here. Uh, I love what he's doing, and I think he can keep it up. He's pushed up on 20 points a game before in his career, and this might be the year he gets there. Yeah, listen, I think it's fun. I think he's playing really good. I I've, I don't see it. I fully think they're going to be in the lottery competing for Victor here in June. Uh, they traded their top three players to lose. I think their front office is probably scratching their head. Uh, I think, like I said, it's fun for the crowd. <laughs> it's fun for the fans. Um, they're playing hard. Jordan Clarkson's balling. Lori's balling. But I, I I think they come back down to earth here eventually. And, and like we said, there's a couple of teams like this that are winning games when I don't think they're really supposed to be and trying to. So it, it's interesting, but the jazz are definitely one of those teams. Cosine oh, Chandler. Yeah. <laughs> you you, 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 you kind of have this, this, uh, you know, battle of philosophies where it's like, Hey, do we push, are we a good enough team to win 45 games? We have, you know, we have some good stuff going on here or do we pull, do we pull out eventually? They have a bunch of tradable pieces, a bunch of pieces that, uh, you know, veteran teams will want. Rudy Gay's right there. Mike Conley's right there uh, on expiring deals as well. Even Jordan Clarkson, who I think they like and who likes it there, and they, they may want to – Shams would know better. They may want to keep him long-term, but they have pieces that they can send out if they decide, like, okay, it was fun. It was a good ride. Let's do what we really came here to do and and jump ship yeah. a little bit. Yeah, and listen, it's early. We can, we can be looking at them in a month, and they could be – five and 18 like who who knows I, I you know i mean i don't think this is i don't think they can sustain you know a top four even you know, but listen only five teams don't make the playoffs now so who knows that's true that is true <laughs> but that is the gamble isn't it like what's the point of making it knowing you're going to get wiped out but it's for now it's fun i think it's all part of the smart take you can say you tried at the beginning of the season and then things just got weird. Not our fault. Uh, coming up next, we've got updates on Lillard, Brandon Ingram, and we've got the first ever in That Man Has a Family. Some dude got posterized, but also posterized someone else. How does that work? Run it back next. Oh, wow. Happy Halloween weekend. My tribute to an icon. <laughs> There you go. I, it's Halloween. I love it. This is one of my favorite holidays. I'm not sure why we're not dressed, but it's time now, Shams, for you to give us the scoop. And I know you've got a lot of updates, so let's get to them. So uh, Damian Lillard uh, will miss uh, one to two weeks. So he's going to miss Wednesday's game against the Grizzlies. Uh, and he's going to be reevaluated re either later this week or next week. So he's going to be out uh, for multiple games here. The hope is that he's going to be back on this next Portland road trip which goes from this Friday to November 12th. Brandon Ingram for the Pelicans, he remains out with a concussion. Um, I'm told that the, the team, when he suffered the concussion last week, the team was bracing for him to be out at least two to three weeks. So we'll see just exactly when he'll be back. But with the concussion protocol, you just never know. It could be at, really at any time. But the Pelicans will be without him. Herb Jones still is out. Zion Williamson came back uh, yesterday in L.A. Oh, he came back in a in a big way. That was a that was a good win. Um, the the story of the weekend, and I know our thread was blowing up. Of course, was uh, the release, the sudden release of Josh Primo in San Antonio. Do you have any updates on that? I mean, like you said, Michelle, just a stunning release. This is a guy who's 19 years old. He was propped up to be one of the faces of the Spurs rebuild and, and a cornerstone for the franchise. They had high hopes for him when they drafted him with the number 12 pick. Um, he's a guy that can score, play well. There are still teams, I'm told at least one or two teams were seriously com uh, contemplating claiming him on waivers. He'll, he'll, he's on waivers throughout today and, mm -hmm. and until 5 p.m. <laughs> Eastern time. So we'll see if someone claims him. But I'm told the Spurs female employee, a former employee, uh, alleged that he exposed himself to her. And she has hired Tony Busby, the lead attorney for the dozen, the two dozen women uh, who uh, alleged sexual misconduct against NFL quarterback Deshaun Watson. So we'll see where this situation goes and, and potential lawsuits uh, here down the line for uh, Josh Primo. But he is uh, he was waived and and I we'll see if he's if he's claimed today. I mean, realistically, someone could. Do you guys think a team takes a chance on Primo after all of this? And, and there's a lot of unknown as well. We don't know what else is coming out. Um, what do you guys think, Chandler? Is there a shot? I mean, I, I think we have to wait for all the details and, 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 you know, for the story to develop. But I mean, 
it'd be tough. Listen, there, there is zero tolerance for this type of behavior within a locker room or really anywhere in the world. This is completely unacceptable and kudos to the Spurs because they just showed, you know, I don't care. We're tanking, we're rebuilding. And this kid is a lottery pick last year. It's unheard of to wave this guy. Uh, and they did because, you know, there's, there's women that are working in every single franchise uh, that shouldn't be going there in fear or stressed or anything like that to, to have to avoid a player or a situation like this. It, it's just not fair. It's gross. Um, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that the Spurs, you know, did what they did because it's unacceptable. And obviously we have to wait for the story to develop, but I feel for the kid cause he's got, he's supposed to have a hell of a, a career and a future, but man, man, this is something that there's zero tolerance now and, and, and it's unacceptable. Yeah, could could a team claim him? I, I trust Shams Intel. Yeah, of course. I don't think they will. There's just too much at stake. Um, they, they have to understand what they're getting into. They have to understand the situation as it happened. And there probably wasn't enough time to do that due diligence anyway. So, yeah, I, I'd imagine we're not going to see him on the court for some time, similar to the Miles Bridges situation. Mm. Does he resume his career eventually down the line? 19, ton of potential, probably. But as of right now, yeah, I don't think we'll see him for some time. Yeah, that's, that story is going to go on for quite some time. Shams will be on it. Shams, I know we're going to let you go, and thank you, but you're a very serious old soul. Do you still get dressed up for Halloween? <laughs> the last time I got dressed up was probably three, four years ago, so it was fairly recent, <laughs> but uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we can do a run it back, you know, a dress up maybe next year. You know, I'm just loading it I'm, up. Yeah, I, look, I am I'm on the road. It. It's my fault. I, I normally would be dressed up, but I, I have to know, four <laughs> years ago, what was your costume? I think it was like Spider-Man. I was a big Spider-Man okay. fan growing up. Like, I, I think I dressed as Batman. Shout out Grant Williams being Batman. <laughs> yesterday, doing oh. the whole voice in the press conference. That was yes. amazing to watch. Like he had the, the deep voice knock, knock in like perfectly. Of course, we're going to have that later because it's probably one of my favorite things from the entire weekend. Uh, Shams, thank you. And and go get us more intel. Bring us more updates. Guys, you're sticking around because it's um it's time for that man has a family. We got a lot. <laughs> We got a lot today and I'm excited about all of it. How about, man, my Spurs right here. Pirtle just does never seems to be on the winning end of one of these videos and no difference Oof. today. Noel with the dog. <laughs> Come on. This this one was crazy too, because he cocked it to the left. <laughs> Usually you see the cock to the right or straight back. He went oppo here with the left. That That's nasty. Oh. Yo, shout out Yaku Pertle for giving this an attempt, but he had no <laughs> shot. That is Yo, insane right there. The the yeah, two hand the two hand boom on you is is that's gotta feel painful. Like yeah, like you, you know, know Noel you had... need to get the extension. <laughs> Noel have you have no fear of someone blocking your shot if you go at them two handed. Exactly. Yeah. That's why Eddie, I appreciate you shouting out Pertle, but for me, it's already we're starting with a complete lack of disrespect or respect because that's the interest starting with two hands like Ooh. he doesn't care that he's there oh man no he, that's a warm-up like he's just Come on. like i'm going about my deal right here it's fine <laughs> disrespectful come on purtle be better all right <laughs> talon horton tucker tht do we love it they do let's see here Woo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i don't hate it i mean he got not the end. greatest he not the greatest block attempt there ever well, yeah, no, again, again, these shot blockers are they're delusional. They have no chance of getting <laughs> to these balls. It's almost like a false hustle where it's, you know, instead of getting ripped in the film room the next day, at least he can say he tried. But yeah, he had no chance either. Mm -mm. What a terrible He's angle to take, too. Like, what is what is the idea? there? Shout out to Taylor <laughs> getting out there making it work, man. I love there's so <laughs> many of these this time. <laughs> ah, what are you going to do? We have a we have a little former college teammate on teammate crime, Matherin, with the steal from Terry. Seems personal to me, guys. I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> this was weird. The game's clearly over. This is like this is a situation yeah. that you don't really see often. This kid's a rookie. He's playing for his dad. This kid's playing for rookie of the year. I, I, honestly, I like what he was saying at the line. The game's not over. And pointing to the clock, how there's still time left. Um, True, but yeah, this is this is a little bush. I like the hard foul, honestly. I would have probably given a harder foul than that. I mean, the crowd booed yeah, for what it's worth and loudly. Yeah, I'm, you, I'm a guy who who hates the old baseball unspoken rules. I love yes. if this exists in, in basketball. Like, don't 
we beat you. Stop this. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, this is definitely an un- like you don't do this. They're clearly just dribbling the ball out. That's that's Bush League. I you look, Giannis doesn't do when he talks smack like that. When he does that, basically, Simmons, you're too small. I, you have to love it. Yeah, it's it's his only attempt at being a villain. What do you think about this one? I mean, in fairness, every anyone everyone's too small to guard this dude right now. So if you're Ben Simmons, you cannot even take this personal because nobody. Mm-hmm. But also, this celebration has gotten out of hand. You'll see Patrick Beverly hit a floater and do the and and do this. Like, well, it's been Patrick Beverly in defense. Yeah, this is getting out of hand, and this honestly wasn't even that like bully of no. a move. But you could just tell. Yeah, yeah, there's some. Giannis is in the middle. Giannis was in the middle of 40 points. He just had to let him know, I guess. I like Kevin's rendition better. The little, like, the, the fingers, like, teeny. I like that better. I'm, <laughs> I'm shocked that didn't catch on more. But, yeah, this is, I don't know. I don't know if this needed a celly. This is just a little, you know. You know no, what? He's at home. Big deal. He's not doing that anywhere else. But at home, I feel like you get away with uh. it. How about Christian Brown? I, uh. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, like, I, mean, I, like I love this guy. I love this guy, by the way. Like, he's Why? just just came here to play defense. Like I'm in the NBA now. I'm here to defend. It's fine. He won defense player year in college and all this good stuff. It's like, yeah, I'm here to clamp up. What do we do? They doing? had this man so. guarding LeBron James last night. I yeah, mean, no fear. Yeah, Rookie. no fear. And I like this too because he easily could have got poked on right here. But like like Eddie just said, he has no fear. He came over. I don't even think who is that going? To, I don't even think he was trying to dunk that. But yeah, that's a nice weak side coming over. He's late to get there, but that's a great block. Yeah, yeah I like look, that one. Like, Christian Braun like doesn't look like he can do any of this stuff. Like, let's be honest. I if I seen him, what are you trying court, to like, say, oh, I could Eddie? Take him. What but, are you trying you know, to say right now? Because he's skinny. Stereotypes are wrong sometimes. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> Not all white guys he are shoot. steady. Thank you. He can't Thank shoot, you, though. Chandler. He can't shoot. <laughs> now, How about this. Donovan Mitchell? But this is this might be my favorite. Yeah, this of is a lot. He's on. one of my favorite dunkers in the league because he, he looks like he's small, but he has like the longest arms of oh. all time. And you can do yeah. that. It, yeah, and he, he dunks so angry. Like, like he dunks yes. violent. Look at that. A four attack. Those, those two foot jumpers, they're just mean. Like they're just they're just <laughs> evil to people when they get in the yeah. That's tough. Yeah. And honestly, Cornette deserves this after the closeout he did on the three-point shooter as well. <laughs> I mean, he is. And then when he lands and you see the, the size discrepancy, it's it's even more insulting. Yeah. That is so good. Point. But we could be a hero one second and a chump the next because Jalen Brown. Oh, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> you you Don't know climb on my back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There was a moment there on the on the break right here. He knew he was in trouble. I mean, well, he's in his he's, face. Yeah, <laughs> there's nothing you can do either. He, you're going to get screamed at. You're, you, what are you going to push him? Like, there's n- absolutely no. nothing he can do at that point. Just Look accept at it. He just walks. He just walks off. Like, you know what? Yeah, he, I, like, he just I've been looks, there. I've been that guy. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> Don't make eye contact. It is what it is. <laughs> I had a minute. Oh, that's so good. Um, we have when we come back, we got to talk a little NBA player and who would make the best NFL guy. And then also, it's time to talk candy corn. It's that time of year when Run It Back continues. Run it over, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it over, run it back, run it over, run it back. Oh, I got one thing to say. Um, so uh, you know, it hurts when uh, you know someone like. Charles Barkley with the platform he has says you're not the same player prior to the injuries you have. It's like, no duh, man. Consecutive years, I <laughs> like, tore my ACL and my Achilles in consecutive years and still help a team win a championship. I mean, it hurt hearing that. Uh, the no duh is highly underused, and, and I'm glad he did. And you could tell he's his feelings are actually hurt. Of course, that's Clay Thompson responding to Barkley when he said he wasn't the same guy and that he was, quote, slipping. Um, it's such a moment of vulnerability, it seems, Chandler. What, what did you think when you saw that from Clay? 
insecure like like why are you paying attention to this um listen charles barkley he, he's media just like we are just like i am right now I, I we're asked to speak on a topic and we speak on it i don't think charles you know said he needs to retire or he's horrible uh he didn't even say it didn't help him win the championship last year he just you know clay thompson the last couple of years has been one of the best two-way players and a top 10 player uh and right now he's not and i I think it's just as clay thompson like come on man you're 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 the you're the second best shooter of all time you're a four-time nba champ stop stop paying attention to you know ronnie 2k's rating of you and charles (laughs) barkley saying you're not the same like you, you have this championship dna and and leadership and it just it kind of boggles my mind that he even allows this to get to him because as someone that's been there and I've been hurt and you do listen to all these things, it sucks, but you know, it's true though, too. Like, you know, you're a step slow and, and no, an ACL is hard enough, let alone on top of an Achilles. So I, I just think it's, it's, he, it's kind of petty to even pay it attention. I think he, you know, really? he's, yeah, it's like, what are we, what are we doing? Who cares what these guys' opinions are? You're, you're Clay Thompson. Like, like, if it's really fuel to your fire, you don't have to say it's fuel to your fire. Just use that for motivation and continue to play. He's part of me is shocked that part of me is shocked that he gave this the time of day. I mean, yeah. the players, especially older players, they seem to just have a weird dynamic with the guys on that show anyway, Chuck and and Shaq and the negativity they come with. And like their whole stick is that we're better than all you guys. And it was tougher and we punched people like that. Type of stuff. So uh, I was kind of shocked to see Clay do this, but the Warriors kind of have done this over their run. Like they've picked at the media and complained and just didn't like being criticized. And I mean, I guess, I guess that's their thing, but come on, Clay just want a title clay. Clay started the thing off with saying, yeah, he's right. But why say it or whatever? Like, yeah, was, that was strange. He, yeah. That was, he is. <laughs> He agreed with him and then still stated how it still pissed him off. Well, couldn't that be then we could just read it as, I mean, look, it's not, it's not a response to a Ronnie 2K or some random troll. It's Charles Barkley. And it seemed as though his feelings were actually hurt. It wasn't that he lashed out. It said his feelings were hurt. I mean, we can all relate to that. Our feelings are hurt. Maybe we don't say it out loud the way he did, but I appreciate that. Right. I mean, we have, we all have feelings. But Chandler, you're like, no, don't say anything. I'm a little bit surprised. I mean, listen, like it's, it's part of it. It's part of the game. It's there's, there's love, there's hate, there's criticism. Uh, This is, these guys are, these guys are making a lot of money, millions of dollars to criticize and to give their opinion. So it's like at the end of the day, yeah, it's, it's obnoxious. It's annoying. It it hurts to hear Mm -hmm. your peers talk to you in that light. But like I said, at the end of the day, you're Clay Thompson, man. You're competing for a fifth championship. Who cares if this guy thinks you're washed? Prove him wrong by playing better and 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 win another one. Fair enough. Okay, fair enough. Moving on. We've got a we got CBA talk. I know it's the sexy stuff, but this time it's interesting because the league's playing with the idea of possibly having a hard cap. Um, and in not shocking news, the players are like, absolutely not. It's a non-starter. Do you guys see a world or would you want to see a world where perhaps it would add a little parity to the league if there was a hard cap, Betty, what do you think? Uh, I personally don't want to see it. I mean, parity sounds cool, but we've never had parity in this league. There's always been (laughs) mega stars. There's always been super teams. There's always been teams that just seem to be a, a step ahead of everybody else. But that's also what makes it exciting. We show up and we root against the Heat. We root against the Warriors. We root against the Lakers. And we need to see them lose to somebody. And then we get the Pistons, we get the Spurs, we get these teams that are exciting in that sense. Um, I don't think it ever happened. Like, I don't see mm-hmm. the players agreeing to this. I don't see the CBA. I don't see the owners agreeing to this um, as, as as a whole. So, plus I'm like, isn't there a cap now? Isn't there a hard cap now? Like, am I, mm. do I not understand the economics of this entire situation? So it's a I, quote I, I unquote it. soft cap as it's called. <laughs> yeah, I know you're right. I'm with you on it. Sometimes the, the legalese and the minutia gets a little bit much Chandler. I mean, you're a former player. There's no way you'd vote for this, right? No. And I, and I think there'd be a lockout before something like this would ever <laughs> happen. I, I think this is the owners swinging for the fences. Um, you know, they're tired of seeing teams like the warriors and the Clippers that are going in the luxury tax and paying this premium, but 
they all can do it. Everybody can do it. These owners are billionaires that make so much money. Players aren't going to go for this. And like I said, I, I guarantee you there will be a lockout before something like this were to happen. I could see that. I, I, nobody wants to put a limit on what they can possibly make. Um, moving on to Dennis Smith Jr., who, of course, with the Hornets, has a non-guaranteed contract, but has been starting in place of LaMelo Ball. But he was asked, you know, sort of he's moved around a bunch, um, you know, number nine pick in 2017, wasn't sure if he'd be able to get back in the league, didn't want to go overseas. And so talked about he had put on a bunch of weight because he was thinking about trying out for the NFL, perhaps making a run at doing that, which is crazy to think about. Um, but then you think, oh, what other NBA players would make good NFL guys? And then, you know, we know LeBron has a history, could have done it, I guess. Eddie, can you think of anyone else that could possibly play in that league? My guy is Zion. Zion's yeah. absolutely be rushing the quarterback and tackling <laughs> Tom Brady and Kyler Murray right now. He he is an insane athlete at that size, and he and he wants to gain weight. So like, let's let him be two eighty and push linemen around and tackle quarterback. I think it would be him. Point. Also, shout out to Dennis Smith for just having a great season and making his way back. I love that. Yeah. Story. it's a great story. It's, it's almost a movie, and it could be, and maybe it will be. Chandler, who are you thinking? Yeah, I think NBA guys are the most athletic guys in the world. I think obviously football and the NFL is a whole nother animal. Uh, listen, I'm tall, I'm strong. I can move back in the day. I don't like to get hit. I don't like contact. I couldn't play. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't play in the NFL. But you look at guys like like Jimmy Butler to me would be an unbelievable NFL player. I think you could pick huh. three or four guys in the NBA that can move laterally, vertically, are strong, you know, are tall. I, I, like I said, I, I think there, I think there's multiple guys that could kind of transition over, but if they have that toughness and, and willingness that I clearly do not. No, the hitting <laughs> I think uh, would be problematic for most because they don't like it in the NBA and it's a different kind of hit in the NFL. So I, I don't know, but it, I wish there was a parallel universe, bizarre world where we could find this out. Guys, it's time for you to play your little mock trial. Put, a, put your hats on. It's convinced me. I'm going to give you a premise, Eddie. Um, okay. Ready? Convince me that the Lakers will still make the playoffs. Um. Look, the, the easy escape route here is to say that there's only 10 playoff teams, or there is 10 playoff teams, so they got a chance there. Uh, but I, I do think they saw some remnants of what they can be yesterday and that they're going to make shots. The thing for me is they're waiting for Thomas Bryant and Dennis Schroeder to come back from injury, and they're actually helpful pieces. Uh, Thomas, obviously, in the in, in the in the paint, but he also gets pop out and hit a three. He's a big that a lot of people are excited to see play with LeBron and, and Russ. So I think when they have their full team, it will be closer to mediocre and that'll be enough. So yes, there you go. I don't know if that was with your chest, but we'll see. Uh, Chandler, <laughs> convince me that someone other than Paolo Bencaro will win rookie of the year. Yeah, that's tough because this kid's putting up crazy numbers and the magic are really, really bad. Um, I think the only two that would have a chance would be Matherin and Keegan Murray. I think Matherin has the best chance and the best chance he would have is if this buddy healed Miles Turner trade would happen. Matherin's doing what he's doing, averaging 21, five, two, whatever it is, coming off the bench, playing like 26, 27 minutes a game. You put him into a starting role with more opportunity uh, and they happen to sneak into one of those top 10 seeds. Uh, I think he has a chance and I think we can all agree that the Magic aren't going to be one of the top 10 teams they are not going to make the playoffs and a team like Sacramento of Keegan Murray that they have a playoff push and he keeps putting up you know 18 5 and 3 and and Mather and I think these guys are, are key players on better teams that that have a chance to you know to get to the playoffs or at least to play in so uh, it's a tough one but I think those two guys are the really the only hope to take it away from him there's a shot Eddie this one hmm. convince me that candy corn is the best Halloween candy. How did I get set up for this one right here? Like, there's, <laughs> I can't do it. This Not in a world where you can go to people's house and they'll give you Reese's peanut butter cups. Can Thank I say you. anything better than that? That's, I'd rather get like the guy that gives you a bag of popcorn and a little <laughs> hand glove thing. Yeah, let me I know keep... I should be you're supposed to tell me it's great you're supposed to convince us somehow that it's you know little pieces of plastic are delicious 
you know, candy corn's at the bottom of the bucket, and then I'm doing like this, so it goes in the trash. There's, I'm sorry, I can't. All spirit of the game here, I just can't. There's no way. I can't. That's fair. And you know what? He's removing himself. I don't blame you. It, it doesn't have like a an expiration date. I don't trust that. That's nasty. <laughs> But coming up next, we're sticking with the Halloween theme. We got Batman in Boston, Tatum's the Joker. It's a Halloween themed fit or brick next on Run It Back. <laughs> Nasty kid. The best part about this team is that we take care of each other. Defensively, that's all we can accomplish. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jason Tatum is confused by Grant Williams. That is, wow, that is devotion to the character, guys. Uh, Grant Williams is Batman. Perfect, right? There's nothing bad to say about that. <laughs> yeah, that's I had the incredible. same reaction as JT. I had the same exact reaction as JT. What? <laughs> the fact that he did the whole media interview in character, <laughs> yeah, that was impressive. That was so impressive. Uh, super new fan right here. Yeah, so this is Fit or Brick, and it's it's NBA fashion time. And and you know what? If I could give it a thousand A pluses, I would. Do we agree? I mean, and he's in costume. He, he's owning Halloween. If they lost, does he still do the voice? Or does he just, like, put his clothes <laughs> on and just do his thing? <laughs> picture, them le picture them losing and him leaving the arena dressed like that. <laughs> I would love it so much. We take care of each other. It's so good. He never broke. There, he's better than some actors, and that's that's all I want to say about that. Um, we had yeah, others. How did he I, not laugh? I, it's, it's so good. I love when people do Halloween costumes. Pascal Siakam, as I believe, Fifty Cent. <laughs> that's fire. I love that. Yeah, that's pretty good. good. Yeah. Got the chains, like being rich on Halloween is way better than going to like the <laughs> Halloween store and try to figure it out. That's like he probably put the order in for this a month ago. I need a bulletproof it's... vest and a Yankee hat. <laughs> yeah, he got the vest. Yeah, and this he's one, got the this, face. This, this is a fit to me. This is, he's he nailed this. Okay, all right, oh, we got 100. two fits, I think, so far. Um, be careful with this next one, guys. It's Bobon with cat ears. <laughs> What is it? He's just got cat ears on. He's just a sexy cat. Like, you know, oh, I pretty see. girls do it. So why not, Bobon? <laughs> that's that's what Halloween's all about, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, this dude is impossible to hate on, but this is this is a brick. This is no effort. Oh. This is this is lazy. Fair. I, I, I'd venture to say he just grabbed those off someone's desk when he got there because he didn't have a costume. I, I see mean, Bobon and John Wick. And his hands are yes. probably about big as my torso. I'm gonna call it a fit out of just fear. Like I don't, I don't want no problems, Bobon. <laughs> he crushed John Wick. He crushed that scene. Yeah, and also in fairness, like where's he gonna get a costume? Okay, this is Jordan Clarkson as Edward Scissorhands. Yeah, that's Yo, he, wow. There was some help here. You, like this, this required like makeup. Uh, uh, you know. Wow. A, this this was detailed. This was thought out. This is this is really really good. And there's two of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so I was gonna say, there. Chandler, did you do the, did you do the duos costume? Did, have you done mm -hmm. that before? That yeah, you know. I don't know me, about and my, me and my girl were were Drago and Khaleesi last year, which was pretty fire. Um, oh, I gotta dig that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll find a pic of that. That was pretty good. But this is this is really good, man. And I think I saw the side by side of the real pic. It's right. It's fire. It, it's it looks yeah. like the original Johnny Depp costume. And yeah. look, you just you said it, Eddie. Being rich on Halloween's great because for all we know, that is the original Johnny Depp. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <Who knows? laughs> it's the best part of being rich on Halloween. Although I will say this. Some of the best Halloween costumes are those that make you think they're they're like puns or riddles or some. I, I do love those. And ladies, we don't always have to do sexy versions of things. Sometimes just be frumpy. Just own it. Come on. Parlay, guys. <laughs> we don't have to go all through it because we're going to try to unjinx ourselves. But I know we have a four leg parlay for the people to possibly make a little cash money tonight. This is what it is. Eddie and Chandler both have their two legs. Um, I don't see a Ben Simmons. Yeah, so we're good. I think we could do this one. You bet 20 bucks, you win 207. It's a good shot. Happy Halloween to everybody for Shams, Chandler, Eddie. Be safe out there. Candy corn's nasty. We'll see you guys tomorrow.